You're listening to the Otis Jiry Channel. <laughs> Beelzebub's Big Time Bakery by C.J. Canatelli Performed by Otis Jiry Aaron Chase's walk home from the bus stop every Monday through Friday at around five in the evening had become an unbearable task for him. With age, his thigh muscles cried out silently in agony. Every day was the same monotonous routine that dulled his mind to the world around him. Aaron Chase was slowly growing old enough to retire. As he took his arduous road home, he found himself parallel to the rundown park across the street. To his right was a mile of abandoned buildings, or at least he had always believed them to be abandoned. Aaron cursed under his breath as the sky let out a cacophony of thunder so monstrous that he questioned whether or not this was the beginning of the next great flood. When he reached the end of the block, he was absolutely drenched with rainwater. His eyes scanned the surrounding buildings as he pled silently to find shelter from the storm. Any open building would do. Aaron had to do a double take when he saw he was standing in front of what appeared to be a newly renovated storefront. The building stood out in comparison to its dilapidated neighboring structures. This place was painted a pastel shade of mint green, with a sign scrawled above the double doors written in a bubbly script. Not giving the name a second thought, Aaron rushed into the building for shelter so quickly that his briefcase fell open paper contents spilling out of it like a mudslide. Aaron once again swore angrily under his breath as he bent down in humiliation, rushing to gather his scattered belongings. He hadn't noticed the man leaving his space behind the counter to help him. Having a crappy day, I see, sir, the man said to Aaron, if I'm not intruding. Oh, sorry to rush in here like this. Aaron said shamefully, The rain. Oh, we've all had our bad days, son. The man laughed. Call me lucky. All my best pals call me lucky. So lucky, Aaron smiled. He glanced around at the delicacies encased in glass. Do you run this bakery? Sure do. Lucky confirmed with a chuckle. All you got to do is tell me what you want most out of life. Aaron's face contorted into a perplexed expression. No one had ever posed such a question to him in that manner, let alone a complete stranger. Aaron contemplated his response. Judging from the mile-long gaze Lucky wore, he was being serious. A hint of curiosity glistened in his radiant green eyes. Aaron took a moment to think about his words carefully. Growing up, Aaron's father had always taught him to select his words with caution. Aaron thought briefly about the chaotic, swirling crap storm that his life had become. He worked a dead-end desk job at a company he didn't give a damn about. His boss hated him. He had no living relatives or friends to speak of. The only time anyone seemed to notice Aaron was when the marshal showed up at his door earlier that day, to serve him with an eviction notice. I wish I were dead, Aaron said flatly. Lucky clapped his hands together and built it out a roar of laughter. He scurried behind the counter and selected a cupcake from the case. It had pink frosting on it. Then, my good sir, I'd like you to have this, Lucky said, approaching Aaron and shoving the cupcake into his palm. This one's on the house. Aaron let out a quiet chuckle. He'd never gotten a damn thing for free in his entire life. Now he was getting a cupcake. It certainly brought a smile to Aaron's face. He quickly devoured the cupcake, knowing that it would probably well, be a very long time before he had something so sweet again. There, there, Lucky said leading Aaron over to a chair in the corner of the room. You'll get your wish. 
I run a business, but hell, can't a man enjoy baking and harvesting the souls of the living simultaneously? Jeez, society is so high-strung. What? Aaron gasped. Souls of the living? Aaron's body seemed to lock up. At first he thought it was fear. Then he remembered his days in college and his experimental drug usage. He'd overdosed quite a few times and barely lived to tell the tale. This was a familiar feeling. His entire body stung with the sensation of a thousand pins and needles jabbing through his flesh and giving Aaron a glimpse at his own mortality. Oh, this one's a piece of cake, Lucky chuckled. See, you'll be dead before I finish explaining. That cupcake was a contract. Since you've accepted a favor from me, I am sure you are well aware of the price. You're not the devil, Aaron gasped, trying desperately to regain control of his body. Aaron's bladder gave out, leaving a steady stream of urine sliding down his bad leg. I'm a crown king of hell, thank you kindly. Lucky giggled. Beelzebub's the name. Soul snatching is the game. Aaron's world collapsed into a realm of darkness. As his eyes closed for the final time, Beelzebub, a very lucky demon, snapped his fingers once, and it were as though Aaron had never even been there. This was, of course, the perfect location to run such an operation. Those who seek nothing will receive nothing. They will walk by an abandoned building without a second thought. Lucky really did love rainy days like this, because the customers seemed so eager to come inside wherever they could, even if they entered the devil's workshop, just to get away from the violent wind and falling water droplets. Galzebub stood up and greeted his next customer. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to listen to this story in its entirety. If you enjoy what you hear and what I do and would like to support me and my efforts, visit my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Otis Jiry. If you haven't yet, please hit the like button and subscribe today and share this video with everyone on your social media. It helps more than you could ever imagine. Again, thank you for listening and have a great day. God bless you.